Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about why treating exercise as a sport can actually improve your muscle building results, the dangers of using iPads and other digital devices to calm children, as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, the guys coach four live callers on questions such as, I'm built like a rugby player and want to lean out. What should I do? What should I eat at restaurants to stay lean and healthy when I'm traveling? I've lost over 150 pounds, but recently regained 20. What should I do to get back on track? And I want a more feminine look, but I feel like I've gained too much muscle in the wrong places. What should I do? One more thing, go to Mind Pump Clips and subscribe. We have short clips for you to share and to enjoy. All right, enjoy the show. Here's a tip that will dramatically improve your success and your results. Treat your workouts like a sport. What do I mean by that? Look at your exercises like skills. Perfect the skills of the exercises and they will pay you back in dividends you couldn't even possibly imagine. Ray sports ball. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Like, well, these guys are going to make fun. I think, are sports. you keeping track of all the sports uh, metaphors this guy uses? I have not, but it's yeah. getting to be quite numerous. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah. Are you lot. watching more sports? Is that why this is happening? No. 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 But what? Wait, isn't it mandatory? Like an Italian guy like you watches soccer, World right. Cup? I mean, no. it's been a big thing. Maybe. Is that racist? Can yeah, okay, I, can hold I on, say Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> huh? it's, it's, you guys are international. You guys. <laughs> I'm gonna see how long this goes. Yeah, do you guys realize that that this World Cup? <clears throat> this is embarrassing. Italy didn't even qualify for this World Cup. Oh, national wow. disgrace! Yikes! Is that is that true? Is that like yeah? Is that a they didn't even qualify for the World Cup? Wow! Yeah. We're talking about one of the best teams of Come all on, time. Guys. You know, Italy's got all that uh, Italian pride. Oh boy! Right was, out the window. It was terrible. That's so annoying. Sorry, I didn't see it. Scotland in there either. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think. Do they, they play ever... soccer? They do, dude. They do. Yeah, yeah. actually, I'm gonna plan on going uh, while I'm there. Really? Yeah, it's a like club team, but yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. No, anyway. so all right. Here's what I mean by this. Okay, <clears throat> we if you were to go and play a new sport, so if somebody's like, hey, I'm gonna go learn golf, or I'm gonna go learn soccer or basketball, they wouldn't go out and just go as hard as they could. They wouldn't take a club and just swing, 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 swing until they were tired and sore. They would actually learn the skill. They would actually learn the skill of dribbling a ball, of shooting a ball. They would learn the skill of catching a football, throwing a football. But for some reason, when it comes to exercise, we take skill, we throw it out the window, and what matters is just how tired I get. And the problem with that is exercises are skills. Mm -hmm. And just like with sports, you can swing a club as hard and fast as you want, and you will not get good at swinging the club. You will not get good at hitting the ball. You will not get good at hitting the target. And just like that, with with exercises, you could squat till you're tired, bench till you're tired, you know, overhead press till you're tired. Yeah. But if your skill isn't good, if you don't do it well, you'll hurt yourself and you will not get great results. Versus looking at exercises like skills and being like, I'm going to get really good at the skill of these exercises. And then the dividends the results just never stop coming and you get better and better and stronger and stronger and your risk of injury goes way down. So don't go to the gym and think I'm just going to get tired and sore or yeah. whatever. Say, okay, here's my layup. Here's my, my, my layout. I should say of exercises. I'm going to go get good at this, get good at this and get good at that. That right there, that alone will make your workouts so much more effective. And by the way, people who've been working out for 10 plus years, it usually takes us 10 years to figure this out. And then when we do, it's like, oh my God, I wish I knew this when I first started. Yeah, it's interesting. You don't see anybody just trying to get through the game. You know, yeah. like, I mean, unless <laughs> unless their parents like forced them, uh, you know, to be there. But yeah, that seems to be the uh, the thought process still that's out there for a lot of people. Like this is work, and it's uh, you know, got to get through the drudgery of it uh, to be able to get. I know I have to be here, and I have to do this instead of like learning to enjoy it and and being really practical about how they they treat every exercise and getting better and improving on it. Uh, just like practice, like you would uh, for any other sport. Yeah. <clears throat> How often do you guys revisit that from for ourselves? For ourselves, <laughs> mm -hmm. like this you know, because imagine use your let's use your sports analogy. Yeah. You've uh, you've learned to dribble, you've learned to shoot. Yeah, you know, you can swing the golf club, you can swing the bat. You know, r really well. Now you've been doing it for a long time. Do you still feel like you have 
workouts where you go back and it's like all technique driven and it's like like almost like you're mm -hmm. like a, a, a beginner again oh uh, i love doing that yes yeah. and so that's why i'm asking like how so i did one of these that's why i'm asking i did i literally trained this way like a, a day ago yeah so how often do you think you do that uh okay so if i pick a new exercise i haven't done in a while that's all it is all it is in the workout is perfecting the skill if i do exercises that i've done for the last 15 years that I feel very, very good about the skill and the technique. Then I'll push the, the weight and the intensity, but the, just like a, um, just like a basketball player who can, you know, throw three pointers really, really well. Their, their, their skill is still priority. Now they may throw them from different angles or whatever, but they know that if their technique is off, they're not going to make a basket. So I think all of us understand that with our workouts, right? Like, like do we throw technique out the window anymore in pursuit of lifting more weight. It's pretty rare now that any of us really do that, really. I mean, I know ego can get in there a little bit, but it's not like it was when I was like 15 where, you know, to add more weight on the bar, I would turn an exercise into something else. Like it doesn't look like that exercise anymore just because I want to lift uh, more weight. But I mean, think about it. Like think of the benefits of a very well-performed barbell row. Like what kind of benefits you get? Mm. Now think of the benefits of a poorly performed barbell row. <clears throat> the difference between the two and results is literally night and day. It's not even close to uh, to each other. It's like one gives you great results, one gives you terrible results. Well, I think there's two things that kind of stand out for when I kind of address that in my programming, and one of them is when I'm working my way up towards PRing or if I have a goal of like actually, um, you know, lifting more weight than I've lifted before, I want to go through a phase of just like working on all the nuances, treating it like it's its own skill, like hyper focusing yeah. on it for a while. Uh, and then the other one is when uh, I've been in a bit of a plateau and I want to learn a new skill or like a unconventional lift or something that's like, you know, I, I maybe I, I knew back in the day, like a, a clean um, and I need to go back and revisit all those like very specific type of nuanced skills that will help me to kind of bring that back in so I can include it to the programming. Interesting. I'm glad I asked him because I feel like everybody has got different approaches to that. Um, there, there's two ways that I, I see it. One is like when, like uh, yesterday it was because I did back-to-back -back workouts. The workout before was pretty taxing. And so I knew I didn't need to really push the weight. So I found I find that a really good day to like reduce the weight and it's all skill. It's mm -hmm. like oh, okay, today is technique, skill, slow down the repetitions, lighten the load up mm -hmm. dramatically. The other time is when it's been like let's say I've fallen off for three or four weeks mm -hmm. and I haven't been consistent and I know that it, I'm easing back into working out. And so I love to start start off with like light technique type of lifting to get easy because I know one it won't take much because I haven't been consistently lifting for the last couple of weeks so I don't need that much load plus I'm also like okay it's like just like I would in basketball if I haven't shot a basketball in you know even though I consider myself a, a skilled basketball player who's been playing for most of his life if I, I haven't played in years right now if I were to go on the court right now I would go and I, I have these little warm-up drills mm. that I would do, which would I would think would be the same as like doing technique drills for lifting. And so I, if I haven't done it in a long time, if I'm, or I've been on a, a, a break, that's when I, I tend to do it. Or two, let's say I'm, I know I'm sore or I overreached lately and then I have a workout where I'm following it back to back. Like those are the two times I think I tend to, to do like yeah. technique type days. Do you guys remember when you piece this together for clients? <clears throat> Like I distinctly, it was a while too. I'd probably been training people for at least a few years. And I remember I had a conversation with a client who would work out on their own and then see me um, like, like a couple days a week and then come in on their own one or two days a week. Mm -hmm. And because they would come in on their own in the gym that I worked in or managed, I would see them work out. Yeah. And I would always have to walk over <coughs> off session. I'm not training them and correct right. their form yeah. every time. And I remember being like, this is so annoying. When you're on your own, this is what I would think, right? When you're on your own, you work out terribly. It's like, I have to constantly watch you. So I told them, <coughs> I said, hey, when you come to the gym on your own, I don't want you to work out anymore. Mm -hmm. All I want you to do is I want you to practice the exercises that we do together and just see if you can make them perfect, like practice the skill of them. And they said, you sure? Is that going to be hard enough? I'm like, I said, yeah, just do that for now. 
And they did, and they got way better results. And that was it. That was the way I communicated it from then on to anybody who worked out. As I said, hey, don't come. Because when you say workout, that to me, to not to me, but to most people means I'm going to go get sore and get sweaty and get tired. And then what happens is the exercises are arbitrary. It doesn't really matter what I'm doing. As long as I sweat and get sore, I had a great workout. It's like, that's not how it works. There's a skill to the exercise, and each exercise provides a distinct value and that value is very closely connected to the skill and the technique of how you perform that particular exercise. Otherwise, the exercises don't matter. This is one of the, one of the big problems mm -hmm. I have with circuit training and classes where they use weights, but they're really not doing strength training, is you watch people work out, and I'm like, man, you can put together okay. any five exercises you want, and it's going to be exactly the calories. They're just moving. Yeah. There's no skill. There's no technique. Like, okay, I know you're switching five different exercises, but in reality, you doesn't matter. You can do five. You can make up five things. You got a pair of dumbbells and shake your head and twist in a circle, and it's the same thing that you're doing now because you're not deriving any value from the exercises because there's no skill and technique that's being involved. Yeah, I remember very specifically when that happened for me as a trainer was because I had like this this window with with a client where I would be able to kind of draw up and take them through all the exercises and build up their workouts. But then I finally had a client that was like, I only have one day a week that I can come in and, and learn and, and do. And so it like, it, it was very challenging for me being that I had everything kind of systematically written up. And then I was like, gonna had my whole systems and process of how I did things and it shook it all up for me. And so I had to learn that, um, we're just going to start with this one major lift and I want you to really focus on this and here's everything I want you to do with it. And you're going to practice this all week. And then we would move to another one once they got a good, once they, they felt proficient enough, uh, with that lift. And I kind of moved on and they had like better success than some other clients clients, I was just taking through like your, your full gamut of exercises. Well, do you remember, I bet you all of us are identical with this, the workouts that you would do with your clients early days as a trainer versus later days. If you looked at the workouts, oh, yeah. the differences would be those early workouts or those early days were so many different exercises, so many different movements, combinations <laughs> of movements, you know, like we never did the same workout twice. Then the second half when we figured it out was like, Wow, Lex, that looks super basic. You're doing the same four exercises almost every workout, and then you throw in a couple new ones. Like, and the funny thing is, second half of my career, I was a super effective trainer. First half of my career, I was a terribly ineffective trainer, and it was because I did not give them time or focus on learning the skill of these. It was really just about how many new exercises I could show the person in different ways I can make them sweat and razzle-dazzle them yep. each, each time. Razzle-dazzle. Razzle-dazzle. You know, this conversation reminds me of a conversation that I had with the um, the NCI group. And, you know, I've openly criticized uh, group training for a long time, right? Um, and one of the trainers there, we were, we were kind of like brainstorming on, you know, ideas on how to do uh, – group training with integrity, right? Like how do I, how do I teach these? And, I, and you've heard me recommend before the prime pro webinar yeah. as like a, a great way to do that. If I were to go back and do group training, I, I would be okay with doing something like that. Another one that another trainer had as an idea. And I just, it, it, I hadn't thought of that. And I thought, man, that is a brilliant idea. And what a, a, a cool time to try and implement this because we are heading into a probably for trainers it's going to be some of the toughest times in the next year to two years with <clears throat> where we're heading economically and thinking of like how do I continue to scale or build my business and this trainer has you wanted to create these group classes that were centered around teaching one lift yeah and I'm like oh I love that. I was there for that I love that yeah, I great. love I love that sense. idea of and it's it's something that I hadn't thought of as a as a trainer that I think if I were to go back I would totally do this, where you know sign up for my six week course on how to squat, mm -hmm. and it, we meet once a week and the, and it's everything from priming to working on any sort of common breakdowns that people have to technique and just. I mean, I could see that being a really valuable, you know, four to six week course mm -hmm. that people could sign up for and take it in a group setting. And even though I don't like training in, in groups, because you're focused on just one movement, you could really you could take, break that movement up <clears throat> and do one piece and then walk yes, around. And then yes. Yep. Yeah. So I just, I really, really like that idea. So for those 
coaches and trainers that are listening that are not already in the NCI group. Um, I thought that well, was a really good idea. Well, I mean, just to add to this, like what one of the things that makes strength training in particular such a tremendously valuable form of exercise, <clears throat> one, one thing that makes it um, extremely unique and valuable in comparison to any other form of exercise, because all forms of exercise have value, but strength training, one of the things that strength training has that no other form of exercise really has is the, the, the tool belt that you have with strength training is massive. And the, in, the ability to individualize workouts and the amount of exercises that you have at your disposal, like no other form of exercise does this. Like I could use strength training on anybody. I can't say that about running, cycling, swimming, yoga, Pilates, like they have a style Strength training has exercises, um, but here's the deal. What makes a squat a squat? The technique and the skill. What makes a press a press? The technique and the skill. It's not what makes a squat a squat, the fact that you work your legs or that a press works your shoulders. It's the technique and the skill. And if the technique and the skill isn't being applied properly, you are no longer doing a squat. So this is the most important part of your workout. And if you're missing this, you might as well take 30% of your progress off or more because your skill is off. And all you're concerned about is, are my quads tired? Is my back sore? Am I sweating? Like, well, now don't do strength training. Do something else because you're, 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 you're wasting your time with the entire thing. So, And I like to communicate that because, again, this is so valuable. And if you do this, it'll make a, a really, really big difference uh, in your progress. All right, today's giveaway is MAPS Split. This is an advanced bodybuilding style workout program. I'm going to give it away for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and also turn on notifications. And then what we'll do is we'll go through the comments. And if we pick you as the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section that you won MAPS Split. We also have a sale going on this month. We took our best at-home workout programs. MAPS Anywhere, MAPS Suspension, MAPS Prime, and the No BS six-pack formula. Put them together in a bundle and discounted them heavily. So the normal price for all of them combined would be over $330, but right now you can get them in the at-home holiday bundle for only $99.99. If you're interested in signing up or you just want to learn more, all you got to do is click on the link at the top of the description below to get set up. All right, here comes the show. Anyways, I uh, want to tell you guys about a funny conversation I had, uh, yesterday with my son. So, uh, I had the opportunity to hang out one-on-one -on -one with my oldest and, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, I got, you know, obviously with four kids or whatever, sometimes it's hard to do that, like that one-on-one -on -one time, but it's super, makes such a big difference when you take one of your kids away from everybody and just mm -hmm. hang out and have conversation. And it was really fun. And it was funny and we got to have a good time. And then we started, you know, kind of telling stories and I was telling him, I've told this story a long time ago on the podcast, but he thought it was so funny. He, he kind of brought it up. So I, I've told this also. So a long time ago, we went over to my parents' house and when my son was little, I'd tell him stories about his grandfather, my dad. They'd be like, you might, I'd be like, man, my dad's so strong and he used to do this, that. And, you know, you're, I think my, my son kind of half believed me, half thought I was like, you know, telling tall tales or whatever. Anyway, went over to my parents' house. This happened like, a, I think a year or two ago. I talked about it on the podcast. The chair? Yeah. And I, we told yeah. my dad and I said, show him, you know, I said, you know, you know, Domenico thinks that you're, you know, I'm making half of this stuff up. And my dad goes over to this like old fashioned, heavy wooden dining room table chair. So like these things are like 40 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever. And he goes, I bet I could lift the chair from the floor by holding one of the legs and keeping my arm straight and just coming straight up with it. My son's like, you can't do that. Anyway, he did it. After that, my son was like, I don't understand. So anyway, we're telling stories. He brought that up and he goes, I still don't understand how no, no did that. I don't get it. He's got arthritis. He walks crooked because his back hurts. I said, I said, I had an experience like that when I was like your age, like when I was like 16, maybe 17, my grandfather, so my dad's dad. So you're talking about like my dad grew up poor and whatever. My grandfather grew up where, you know, he lived in a, it was like a cement basically room with, you know, I don't know, seven siblings, a donkey, and his parents. And this was just what this is where they grew up. <laughs> yeah. In the in the same room. They used Really? To, wow. Yeah. When it was cold, you don't have to leave the donkey out. Where are you gonna put the donkey? They don't have no they don't have a backyard. <laughs> Dang. The donkey How come you never told that part of the story? In the same house. Uh, it's such a 
It's such a crucial part. Bro. Yeah. And he's got all this, you know, you, they used to divide the room with sheets. With sheet, first of all, I feel like I can never tell. Manger? I can never tell poor poor stories ever again, dude. Yeah. Oh, you. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> yeah, not when you live with a donkey. Yeah, I Adam's like, I didn't have cable. When yeah, I was yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's like, we had ponies. We didn't have donkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. It's so, you know how they they would divide the room with a sheet. My 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 grandma would put like a sheet like this, so yeah. you have the donkey, the kids over here, and the parents. <laughs> I remember I told Jessica this so crazy the other day because we were trying to find time to get to be intimate, you know, and we got the babies and like, it was so hard. You know, put the baby down. Oh, this one wakes up. I'm like, how the hell did my grandparents, my, my grandparents' parents have like eight kids? They get the kids right over there in the sheet. Like I, every every time they're intimate, it was like, let's go around the corner real quick. And, you know, right. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just sneaky. Yeah. There yeah. you go. So, so anyway, I'm telling, I'm, so I'm like, dude, I had an experience like that. I said, I was, either, I was probably 16, two years into lifting weights. You know, when you're 16, you think you're the, just the shit. You're full of testosterone. You're all, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're tough or whatever. Sure. My grandfather, I believe this was the first <clears throat> time he ever visited America. My dad bought him a ticket and my grandfather came and to visit. Well, anyway, <clears throat> he stayed for the summer. And in the summer, I used to work with my dad. So my dad did construction and I would go help him. And my job as a 16 year old was I'd mix the cement. I'd carry the buckets of cement. I'd wash the tools. Because my dad would, you know, he'd, he'd do, you know, he'd float mud or, you know, do tile or whatever. And mixing cement, it's like a big, you know, tub, huge tub, probably twice as big as this table in front of me. And the way you mix it is you add the sand, the cement, depending on what you're <clears throat> making, lime, water. And then, on, and then you have this huge, this long, it looks like a, kind of like a hoe, you know, like you would, you would use in the dirt and you mix it. And then you go around the end and it's, it's exhausting. Okay. So this is. Summertime. So my grandfather visits and my dad tells my grandfather, Hey, we're going to go to, you know, you know, tomorrow I have to go to work because he couldn't take work off. Mm -hmm. And he goes, you stay home here. You relax or whatever. And my grandfather's like, like stay here with, with what your wife, what am I going to do? Like, I'm coming to work with you. So my dad's like, fuck, I got to bring my dad. So, so my grandfather, who at the time was probably 67 came to work with us. And my dad says to me in English, Hey, you know, your grandfather's going to help. So he's going to help work or whatever. So you and him are going to work together. Help me. Now I'm 16 years old. So I'm like, oh, this poor old man. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try and make sure he doesn't like yeah, hurt himself. I don't want to bury him you yeah, know, like, too I, fast. I, well, I, don't yeah. I wasn't even With thinking that. Work. I was just thinking like, yeah. I'm going to help my grandfather because, you know, he's old <laughs> or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't want him to hurt himself. So we go there and it's hot. It's summertime. You know, San Jose, I don't know, it was like 90 degrees outside. And we got to mix this, this cement, these tubs of cement. My dad was floating this huge floor. So it's like nonstop mixing, right? And I'm looking at my dad. I said, what about no, no? Like, what if he gets too hot or too tired? Like, what are we going to do? And he goes, don't, don't, don't worry about your grandfather. He'll be okay. I says, okay. So we go out there and we're mixing cement. And so he's on one end of the tub. I'm on the other end. So I mix it. And when I get my hand done, I kind of flip it over to him and he mixes it. And it's hot, right? So we're doing this. <laughs> and I was telling my son this. He was cracking up. And in my head, I'm like, poor guy. He's going to die. Like, whatever. Dude, we're doing this. <laughs> And my, and I'm like, I'm starting to, it's like, I'm starting to die. Like I'm hot and I'm looking at my grandfather and I'm thinking he's going to pass out or something. Like, you know what he does? He starts whistling. <laughs> he's whistling music, woo, 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 passing it back and forth. Yeah. I see water right over there, a cold jug of water <clears throat> and it's cold. I know it's cold cause it's kind of sweating on the sides or whatever. I'm like, God damn, I want that water so bad. My grandfather didn't stop. We didn't get no water and I was embarrassed to stop. So we're going back and forth, back and forth. And I'm like, this old horse is what is going on here? Anyway, we get home. Like, I, I had blisters on my hands that day because I like refused to give up. We go home. I crash on the couch for like three hours, <laughs> and I wake up, and my dad comes over to me. And he goes, "Hey, he goes, your grandfather kicked your ass today, didn't he?" I'm like, "How the hell did he do this?" Like, and he came home and then he did the yard work. Yeah. I'll tell my son this, and my son goes, "How did he do it?" I'm yeah, like, you know what I think. Listen, even those guys from that era, different. Yeah, they grew up like that was a vacation to him. You know, do you know what's even crazier about that is I actually think that you would get your ass kicked more today than you were did at 16. Probably for sure. Probably for sure. Like yeah. when I, when I was 16, I was resilient enough to like, yeah. you know, it, that stuff, cause I did the same stuff, right? Yep. It still would kick my ass, but I think how deconditioned I am in comparison to what I was at 16 and that I don't do that type of a job. If I had to go do that now, so that put that into perspective, he's 60 something years old 
and he was able to go out there and do that. Imagine you today. I bet you you today would get beat by your sixteen year old self. I, I was I would die. Yeah, no, I was dying. I then. sneezed the other day and hurt my back, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. The fuck? I've done that before. for sure. I for sure, I had one of those moments of like, oh my god, I'm getting old. Hey, dude. so I was driving in the truck, <laughs> and you know, I see. Yeah. Oh, you. I had one of those. I'm like, oh, I, need to oh. Lay down. I deadlifted earlier in the day, so my shit was all tight. <laughs> And just a oh. hoot you like that. And I was like, oh shit, did I just pull something? <laughs> hey, so fucking hey, bad, hey, dude. Don't, hey, you guys be honest. Embarrassing. Right now. You guys Dang. be honest right now. Be real honest, okay? Do you guys use your seat heater now to kind of like loosen up your back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some days. I haven't thought of it like that. You're no, in your car, you're on the right side of my hip. Yeah, yeah. That's like, the first time that's happened out. to me, though. That, that swear to God, that's never happened to me before. And I was like, oh, that's embarrassing. That's happened to me. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, and no, I coughed. I, I coughed. I had a cough once and I coughed and I threw out my back. Okay, so yeah. do you, do you remember? So I, I attributed it to the, 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 Head, the heavy or the hard, I should say, deadlifting, you know, that I had yeah. done. Like, I was like, okay, maybe because of all the deadlifts I did the other day that my back was really tight. You kind of, yeah, in that state. Yeah, well, it happened to me because I used to, like, pop a rib out because of uh, practice from football. And, like, I would get in these collisions. And then every now and then, like, my rib would pop out. <clears throat> and so, you know, even, like, years later, like, just random shit like that would happen. And then it would, like, pop back out. It would be, like, hard to breathe. Like, uh, I didn't need somebody to just step and like walk on my back to get it to pop back. So we gotta, we gotta be, we gotta be authentic right now. Okay. Besides our one workouts, we do five days a week, four days a week. We sit, we (laughs) sit a lot and have conversations. Yeah. All day. Oh yeah. no, that, I'm I I move less today than I have in, yeah. a, in a very very long time in my yeah. life. Like I have to really get out and like. I mean, I then we commute in the car too. It's just like you know, yeah. there's a lot of hours spent a day. A hundred percent, totally. So when you take somebody that works like uh, physically for a living, yeah, they're moving physically hard for eight hours a day for 20, 30 years. Like that's a resilient body. Totally. Yeah, I lift weights, you know, four or five days a week for an hour. Like I'm not resilient. Yeah. I'm more resilient than the average. Yeah, but I got better skin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever seen skin on them? Yes, you know, dude. Hard workers. <laughs> hey. It's rough. That's so funny. Uh, when I when I see like my elderly, in my elder family who grew up hella poor in Sicily, they, in their 70s, they look like like people who grew up here in their hundreds. Like you look at their skin, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you're 65, yeah. but you're, you look like you're 105. <laughs> Nobody wants to say that. No. <laughs> what did you What did you moisturize with? Yeah. You know, dirt in the sun. Like, what was he doing? He's <laughs> got a pitchfork, and they're just you know, yeah. posing. Uh, you ever look at old pictures? By the way, mm-hmm. you ever look at old old black and white photos, and then you realize they were eight, 18 years old in the picture. Like, why does he look thirty seven? Yeah, dude. Okay, so I'm gonna shoe this in. Like, I was having a uh, conversation with my brother over the weekend. We did Christmas early and everything. Uh, and kind of speaking to like things kind of going back in time. So we we're talking about the chat GPT and like how th- oh, yeah. this whole thing is just going to disrupt everything. I'm it's like, crazy. dude, this must be crazy. Cause he's a uh, teacher and he teaches like AP history, AP English and all this stuff. And he's like, dude, like all these students are always trying to cheat and like find ways to hack and, and do all this stuff. And I'm like, this must be like rampant. And he's like, yeah. So we literally make them handwrite everything. So everything is going back How completely wild. full circle now to doing handwritten uh, work and essays in class, and they, they can't type anything. Oh, wow. That's I was like, inter- that's hilarious. What an interesting thought. Wow. Wow. Yeah, because they can't so they control have to write, it. They have to write in class. They have to literally write it out. No more typing wow. reports out. These poor kids. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're little <laughs> fragile hands. Yeah. You know, like fucking hand cramps, oh, dude. Oh my god, what is this? <laughs> Hour of writing. Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, it's so traumatic, dude. Like, just yeah. wait, oh. wait for the hashtags. Well, because oh, initially god. I thought to myself, well, handwriting. All they'll do is they'll have Chat B- GBT do it, and then they'll copy it. Yeah, but they have to do it in classroom. Yeah, I mean that's the not only to, way you can not to mention it. that's like so redundant to do that. Yeah. Like, I mean, at that point, you it's almost like you to cheat is like more work. Yeah, I mean, say you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> yeah. you have to you have to go to the the chat GPT, then you got to rewrite it. It's like you may as well just wrote it the first time yourself. Yeah. So it makes it does make it even. That's smart. That's I just really thought it smart. was the most ironic thing I've heard. You know, like we got so far technology wise that like <clears throat> now we literally have to revert back. So to the okay, beginning. I mean, this is why I actually think this whole uh, that I've been saying forever, the whole unplugged plug thing, the division in the country. Like, I really think that's going to happen. I think we're going to go back. I think there's going to be a lot of things like that where. 
we're going to have access. Yeah. We're going to have the capability to make it easier, to make it better. And then I think people are going to choose. So, yeah. so okay. So here's to, otherwise just be really dumb and be cool with it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have, so here's what I, I have conflicting thoughts about that. Right. Um, on what part? Well, on my part or the, what, what he no, said? No, no, no. With, with making the kids write it in class. Uh, okay. I, I, I get that. I get the <laughs> rationale by the way. Uh, so I'm not saying I disagree with it, but then I get this thought, which is if the future of, uh, markets and the economy and jobs and careers, the future of m many things, if not all things, is going to involve working with some form of AI. And so the skill, the skills required to be effective are no longer, yeah. can you figure it out yourself? The skills are going to be, how can you work with this device yeah. in better ways? What, right? Okay. What, what, um, what industry do you guys see this disrupting the biggest and first? Oh, right now, uh, copywriting. Yeah. I th right now, right away, copywriting immediately. immediately. Yeah, immediately. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I think uh, that's a good. That's a good guess. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like marketing. Like, copy. Yeah, like it's got to be like the whole legal process, right? Because anything where you have like everything written out and then you have to be able to read through it all, you could just ask it to, you know, summarize it all for you. And it, I'm sure it'd make that yeah. process. You know, easier. the hard part of that question, Adam, is it's so hard to even, I have to sit and think really hard because it's so different. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can't I even imagine. I'm trying to well, that's right. It's a fun, it's a fun exercise to try because we're probably wrong. It'll probably disrupt something we're not even thinking about. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Probably like the, shipping or something. That, I know. Yeah. The, the truth is, <laughs> you know, you, we, we don't know and it's hard to guess. I think that that's a good initial Customer guess. Customer service. I could see it well, crushing yeah. customer service. That's, oh, there you go. That's probably already happening. Yeah. Well, right. think about how shitty customer service is. You call and they already have AI try to talk to you, but it's oh crappy. my god! I didn't even show. Did you guys? You guys never look when I show. Do is do I have to put something like? <laughs> we a, do, dude. Like, do I need to put like an asterisk or like? Because I the last thing I sent was like, wow, wow, holy shit! And I know you didn't even fucking open it. And I'm like, what do I need to say to get you guys to open it? That this isn't just like because I know we have a thread, right? We have this thread where we share yeah. ideas and stuff that we should talk on the podcast, and yeah. it gets kind of sometimes muddied with like half nude pictures and like random yeah. like dad jokes, and it's like yeah. okay, allegedly, those are cool, but. And then every why once in a while, you, why would you say that? That's not uh, true. What they yes. do, <laughs> these are all false claims. Uh, I'm looking, I know you're doing, I'm like looking fact, forward to you getting in trouble. He's like a fact <laughs> checker, That's like so not true. Warning next to Adam, little fact check. We don't do that. First of all, Doug's daughter looks at his phone all the time. That would be stupid. But anyway, <laughs> we would never do that. He literally did that yeah. specifically setting us up to get failure. us fucking yeah, in trouble. That's Jeez. not true. Anyway, continue. Yeah, anyways. Oh, so, so nice. <laughs> Unless it's so, a photo of yourself. <laughs> you said no sometimes for sure. Yeah, I'm in a bear rug. I can't help yeah. it. Yeah, hey, I, guys. I'm in. Hey, guys, check out my watch. Like, bro, uh, you got to put pants on. When so my, my point is, did you guys see what uh, the Andrew Huberman's is? And the, in, it was actually Enzo who sent that to me and said, you guys need to do this. Um, imagine somebody who comes into our ecosystem right now, if they, if we had that software yeah. built and like automatically feeds you all the Smart. episodes or exactly at the minute marks, all the white papers we've oh, written. So you can all say, the, hey, show me the episode. Pull, pull up, go to our, our, please, Doug, go to our thread since none, none of you frickers, fucking I know, guys, I frickers like did none of this yeah. stuff. I, can't I, like how you, you, I like how you didn't say the F word. I know. Right you frickers. I was, I was looking at you're Doug. So you're Doug, so bad at that floppers. <laughs> Doug always gives me a hard time for swearing too much. That's why. So. I was, look, I, was, I was looking at him, fuckheads. looking at him, oh, not man, trying not to. I, so I think you Huberman. <laughs> what the hell's a fricker? Frick. Did you pull it up, Doug? I'm getting it right now. Yeah. So, so you ask Huberman AI. And so all you have to do is, is type in a question. And, and I mean, let's, I don't think he has as much written content and, and audio and video as we have. So, and we've been talking about this. I mean, God, we have a customer service team that this is what they do long form right now. We, we field a hundred emails a day. So we just need an AI bot to literally just like consume all our stuff and then just shoot it out. Yes. Yeah. I'm so, in. So, I mean, our, so you're trying to say our customer service team is about to get replaced. So <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Right here, right here. Yeah. See this? Yeah. Letters in the mail. What am I looking for? So if you were to, if that little bar, well, the Doug could type in anything and yeah. see how, see how well it works. If you, I haven't. Gone well, here's through. one that says, how can I build muscle? And then there's a bunch of, uh, there's Dr. Andy Galpin. There's, um, so basically Jeff Cavalier. Well, no, this is what, so this is what people have been saying. So basically this will be a, a far more accurate, easier, more effective search engine. Yeah. 
that you can be very specific with and get the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then imagine what, like what he's done here is, so you know, the, you know what this highlights to me, building by the way? into our own ecosystem. You know what this highlights to me is that people need to be very careful when they see a dominant, uh, player in the market, be very careful at, at, at assuming that that particular player is going to be dominant forever and no one could possibly ever overtake them. What are right. you saying by that? What do you mean by that? talking about uh, Google versus this new AI? It, 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 exactly. Because yeah. uh, things innovate and what we think now can never be replaced or changed. Yeah. That's what innovation is no, like. This so, is going to change. That's so, that is so false. By Doug, pull this stat up. I've brought this up on the podcast before. How, in 50 years, how much of the S&P will have turned over? Yeah, most of it, like 90%. Yes. Yeah, I know. That's in 50 years time, like yeah. 90% of the companies I mean, that are like the leading companies right now right. will not be there. That's the reason why. Exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. But yet people will say things like, I know, like you know, oh, there can't be beat. We need to make laws to prevent like Google from being so of, big. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, don't worry. Monopolies. It's going to happen. Yeah. Speaking of powerful media and all that stuff. So, man, you see uh, Twitter, boy, is... Uh, Elon is he's, he's launching all kinds of files yeah, out there. Yeah, so uh, and and what and he he kicked he suspended uh a few accounts. Okay, so how do you feel called. about how do you feel about some of the stuff that he's doing right now? Is it being received? It's not being received well at all See, right now because he came out hypocrite. He exactly. So so okay, so here's the main thing. There's an account that tracks in real time hmm. where he's at with his jet, with his private jet. Doxing, right? It's it's well, it's Technically, yes, essentially, right? In real time. So what happened was apparently one of his kids, it, there was a potential threat because through this, they thought he was, was on the, to, he thought he, they thought he was on the private plane. It was really his kid on the private yes. plane. Somebody, some, some crazy person rolled up. We don't want violence kid. unless it's uh, not what we like. Yeah. Then violence. So I, now this is, it's all public information. Uh, in other words, you could technically figure this out yourself. <laughs> You still find it on Reddit. Yeah, but I, I I get where he's coming from. I do think that well, the hypocrisy though is that he it, it, like he's supposed to be this huge advocate for free speech. This is free information that is on the internet anywhere else, yeah. and so now you're blocking it from being put on your platform. It is a bit hypocritical. Now, do I not? Okay, do I think it's as bad as what um, all the the liberal people that were in charge of Twitter? No, because that was uh, he's just blocking like his travel schedule. Not his yeah. travel schedule. He's not allowing pages that track people in real time where they're at. So that's become like a well, popular thing where like you know there's people that will track like Bill logical. Gates and himself and like some yeah. like super like famous people and so you know at all I get times. that by the way yeah. you know okay so here's you the get thing. what uh, no I think I think that I understand why so here's the thing are you are, who the the Elon or you understand why Elon. I stand, oh, okay yeah well, I, I understand you, meant you understand why people are doing no that. when you look at the, the Twitter files and what they released <clears throat> the censorship was definitely in one direction and it was politically motivated so there's different kinds of speech that we have and political speech should be the most protected because you're talking about entities that have the ability to legislate and jail people and execute people. They have those legal powers. Um, so you need to be able to keep that as free as possible. <laughs> now, here's the other end of it. I, I don't like, think I like Elon found an angle there. I don't think Elon ever said, uh, you know, we should let people say terribly racist things or we should let people threaten each other right. or any of that stuff. No, did he he just got to, he got he kicked uh, Kanye off Kanye, already, right? Right. Yeah. right. So yeah, which so is, he's he's is he's the right he's, move. Yeah. By the way, speaking of which, you want to talk about selective outrage? Okay, here's how annoying. This is how stupid the game is for anybody who's like, "Oh, Elon's a hypocrite." Like, you know, I wish I could slap people through the camera right now, and here's why. Uh Kanye says some anti-Semitic shit. Gets banks don't allow him to bank with them. Kicked off media. Like, literally, try, people trying to destroy him. Balenciaga still mm. banks with everybody they want to bank with. Still has people holding their money, investing with them. And they're literally posting pictures. So does of that same argument hold for people that want, like, really highly regulated gun laws and no guns, but then the they're protected by people with guns? Yeah. Yeah, that's another. Mm. Yeah. So, anyway. I don't, I don't, okay, so I think... I think it was a bad move on his part. Do I understand it? Of course I understand it. If it was my family, I'd probably do some some crazy knee-jerk reaction like that too. But I still think it was a knee-jerk reaction because it threatened his family, yeah. as all of us as fathers probably would too. This so is a safety so issue. understandably, but not a smart play because it the, because of the hypocrisy in it. I think the move 
the smarter move would have been, okay, right now I'm in the middle of this shit storm with Twitter. I need to keep my family tight, close, well protected. Whether that means the guy's got billions of dollars, spend a few hundred thousand dollars on freaking a couple Rambo's that follow all your kids around, and so you ain't got to worry about some crazy person. Whatever, take that approach for now yeah, until yeah. the dust settles well, with this or that. Unless, now? unless he's playing 4D chess. And this is still all because here's when he did the whole thing about um, the the voting him that to me that like everybody was like, oh, everybody, and of course, the left is making a huge deal about it, that more people voted for him. Not to, He knew that. So I think that he already has a CEO who's set to go. And he, you talking about the polls he's doing? Yes, the poll that he he put well, out because he did a poll on the on the on suspending these accounts, and most people said yes. People who dox other people should be kicked off. Oh wow, he he lifted it. Yeah, yeah, he lifted it. Yeah, so he is he is now. Okay, now that's a cool move right there. Wow, that's a cool move. Yeah, so he did a poll, that, yeah. and now he lifted the suspension. Here's why I don't like the poll stuff. Polls can easily be skewed. And also, I don't think you should run your company by uh, like popular opinion uh, because that'll destroy your company. Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, but that's also a smart way to do it. Uh, yeah, politically speaking. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a smart way to yeah, smart way to do it right there. What's that one say about uh, way to run a company. go down? Go right. Uh, what does that say? Oh, that's not oh, one. go back up. Oh, that wasn't Elon no. who did that. No, uh -oh. he did do. Alex Jones. I thought he said Alex Jones. No, he did do one that said, um, do you, <clears throat> "Should I step down as CEO?" Yeah, and uh, majority of people said yes. Right. So, and I think he, I think he planned to. Yeah. Yeah, I think he planned to. Anyways, I think he has a CEO in line already, and I think he just he set do the table. Do you know who wants him to step down more than anybody? It's people want him to go away so he doesn't get no ice. No, it. because I think he'll have a CEO that follows along with of what course. he wants. Of course, he owns the company still. You, it's like he's yeah. still in control of it. Do you know who wants him to step down as CEO? Hmm. Tesla investors. Oh, of course, because yeah, they, they think it's yeah, going to take some of his time away from the company. As that soon as he steps down, watch Tesla stock go up. Sure, because. They're afraid that he spread too thin. Yeah, that he just and that's can't, a valid concern. That he can't do it all and and all that stuff. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But what's interesting to me is how organized this concentrated effort to uh, bring him down is, and how silly it is considering that the man probably has done more for preventing the ill effects of you know pollution, climate change, innovation, space travel than anybody. And these are things that these same people who are going after him supposedly value. Um, so it's just, it's, it's really interesting to me. Well, it's just interesting to me to have, I can't even still have conversations about any of those files. Like people just don't want to accept it as a reality or something. Yeah. Like it's just not even like, ah, oh, well, it's all, you know, bullshit or yeah. whatever, whatever. Like it's like, you gotta like, <clears throat> You can't even like consider the fact that like they're going in there and like doing an audit and finding like this is valid information. Yeah, I be think concerned. I think David Sachs brought a really good point up on All In with this whole Elon situation and and saying like the where it's different is what they were censoring before compared to what he's. It was no. all politically motivated. Yeah. And he's also transparent. Yeah. What yeah. they did before is they would shadow ban you. Yeah. So you had no idea. Well, and there's yeah. clear evidence the FBI was involved in this. Very clear. So it's like, it, like who doesn't have a problem with that? You should definitely have a problem with that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's crazy. Some people don't, all right. dude. All right, let's get into some some studies. Can you do a commercial first? We have two commercials. We haven't even done one. Yeah. What, what do you want to talk about? Well, do the Sleep Me one. Let's talk about Sleep Me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, for people who don't know, they changed their name. So they used to be called Chili. Been, okay. What's what is hard is that it's been it's been referred to as Chili Pad and then Uller and then now Sleep Me is the company. Sleep Me is the company, right? So these are devices that go on your bed and can warm or cool your bed and maintain the temperature, and you can have the app adjust it so that it warms up slowly in the morning to naturally wake you up. And uh, th this has profound positive effects on your sleep profound and i speak i'm speaking from personal experience but also studies will show this makes a big difference so it's also one of the products that i think all of us consistently all use right oh, there's all, i mean i would say most of the products yep. you know two or three of us will consistently use maybe yeah. one guy not so much it's up there with one of the it's one of the partners that every one of us have on our on our beds and it's like swear by yeah. it like this has been what I haven't been able to use, and I love somebody who's a listener who's who's bought a new one, is the new Doc Pro. Yeah, mm. the Doc Pro. So the, my my so one critique, my one critique of the Uller was that 
that I had to, it took me a while to figure out the timing of when I needed to turn it on so that it would keep my temperature perfect all night. Early on, I made the mistake of thinking that, I, oh, I could just turn it on a half hour before I get in the bed. That didn't give the, it didn't give the Uller enough time to bring, because I like it so low, mm. bring it all the way low. And what I found was if you get your hot body in that bed and while your it's- Your body's hot. Oh, yeah. yeah, real hot. And it's trying to cool it down. All night, it's working, and it never reaches that low temperature you want. So you have to get it all the way down first. Where I think the Doc Pro, like it's, I don't know how much faster and how much more powerful it is mm. than the Uller, but I, I know it was that it's a, even more uh, quiet. Yeah, in, in terms of its. Uh, so I, that output. doesn't. I like the white noise effect. Yeah. Yeah, so I I, I don't like mind it. Just you know, some what's, people what's do. Yes, yeah, five times Notice more that. cooling power. Oh, five shit. times. Five times. Holy cow! Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to upgrade mine. Yeah, freeze a shit. You I'm know. gonna have to upgrade mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it just makes it nicer because there's been times where you know I get to bed earlier than other nights and like it hasn't had the total. Did you have amount. it on timer? Yeah, it's all set on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have mine all set up for cooling at a certain time and heating up in the in the morning time. Um, but I have I haven't tried the Doc Pro and I didn't know it was that much stronger. I might switch it out. Maybe I can get a deal with them. We'll Dude, before we get to studies, oh, I have man. to share a picture. I'm gonna send it to Doug so he could post it uh, on uh, on the on the screen up there. Doug, I'm gonna send you a picture right now. So every once in a while, <clears throat> I see a picture of like when you know when people do like sanctioned fighting, like Muay Thai boxing or whatever, and then it just reminds me of why I would never want to do a sport like this. Is it what happened to their face? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just this guy got Doug. Maybe you can post the picture up on the screen. So this guy is a Muay Thai fighter, and uh, I don't know if he could switch it up. And uh, he got he took an elbow to the forehead. Okay. So I don't know if you guys know. So elbows can be extremely oh, powerful. Oh yeah, that's and deadly. crazy force. Right so can produce. There's his uh, forehead into right your there. elbow. Oh so. my god! Wow. <laughs> that wow. is a perma dent. He yeah, it'll fracture his skull right in the front of his head. He's got a third eye. It looks like is it fractured? Yeah, bro. It's like a planet. If you look at a planet after a meteor hit it, so it's got that. now will that return, or is uh, he like forever fucked? He's gonna have surgery, metal plate or something, yep. right? To, is that what they'll have to do? Yeah, I would dude. think. God, wow, that's yeah. brutal. Yeah, How, Man, you know, brutal sport. You know, it's fun. You know, it's crazy. Like a little bit of a black eye. Maybe a swollen lip, like, you know, like the next day, like kind of cool. Yeah. Like, what happened to your eye, bro? Oh, oh. You know, I'm a fighter. When they fracture the orbital bone oh, no, or, and like their whole face just no. turns into an alien. No. It's, but imagine, you, imagine you show up like stuff. that somewhere with a, like a, like a big ass dent in the front of your head. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude. What happened to your head? Like, At I'm the out, same time man. too, you got to be a little scared to say something to that person. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's, I, yeah, yeah, they've I wouldn't been say through war. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like I'm not, I'm not fucking around. Yeah, like, yeah. What happened Especially if he's got the cauliflower ears going at the same time too. It's like, yeah, I'm not going to say nothing. What happened to you, man? <laughs> yeah, scary. All right. Studies. I'm going to pull. So I read a cool study on uh, digital devices and, and when they're used to calm down children, meaning, you know, you're, you're busy or whatever and your kids act. Oh, up, interesting. And you're like, here's an iPad. Here's the TV. Uh -huh. Okay, so what were they? What were they looking for? What was the hypothesis? Well, they, there was. No, I don't know about the hypothesis, but I'll tell you what they found. So okay. this came out of the Michigan, the University of Michigan. Okay. So summary: frequent use of devices like smartphones and tablets to calm upset children, ages three to five, was associated with increased emotional dysregulation in kids. Wow. So now what they said share was that, share that with me. Would you share yeah, it in our thread? So they said the reason why this happens is that it prevents the child, especially during these critical ages, you know, three to five, it prevents them from learning how to regulate their own emotions. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they do it through distraction mm -hmm. and they, never, they end up not learning the skill of calming themselves. Right. So then when they're in school or whatever, when they don't get the tablet they or phone. Cope, uh, yeah, intrinsically. They don't have the skill. Yeah. So then they can't, they're dis, they have dysregulation. And mm -hmm. those are critical times uh, when they're, you know, when at that age. How, what was the, uh, how it says frequent use. What is that considered? Uh, once they, a day, five times a day, once a week. What uh, would the study use? You know what? Let me see. Because that would make a difference, right? If you're constantly, every time the kid cries, you use that, you know, multiple times a day to do that versus the person who maybe once in a blue moon. It does. only says as a regular go-to soothing strategy. Regular. So I would assume, Probably daily then. I would assume it it's 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 regularly, in other yeah. words, like on, on a mostly daily. You know, it's funny you bring this up. Last night we had, Katrina and I was so 
happy and proud of my wife for bringing this up because this is like a big deal for me. Um, you know how I'm always talking about, you know, manufacturing adversity for my son yeah. and that I'm so concerned that he's going to, he's being raised in a different type of environment than I was. And I know how important it is to, to, to be challenged somewhat growing up. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's the, he's an only child with her and I, he's the baby of the family. Everybody like showers him with gifts. And she said something to me on the way back from uh, Gilroy gardens last night. And she's like, you know, I really, um, you know, I want us to to practice telling Max no for the sake of no, because you know he's he's an only child, so he gets a lot of yes from us already, and then he gets spoiled from all of his aunts and uncles, and so he's constantly being told that. And so, and she's like, you know, I, I was thinking about the other day. She's like, I can't even remember the last time that he asked for something or wanted to do something, and and the answer was no. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad you're talking about this now because. I just foresee what a problem this was, is going to be if we don't practice that, if we don't practice just, and it, it it doesn't have to be like a big deal that, you know, if we were driving home and we were listening to Christmas music and he wanted to listen to his stuff. And yeah, it, Katrina's like, no, you know, and, and she's like, you know, is that something normally that we would just do? Yeah. You know, just, oh, we transitioned to like yeah, listening yeah, to some yeah. of his stuff just to, cause he asked and we're cute, yeah. but it's like, we, we don't ever say no. And so saying no for the sake of no, because it's important that he learns that and then learns to cope with it. That's it. He has to learn how to deal yeah. with the fact. And then afterwards get- he was a little fussy about it. It's like, no, just don't play into it. Don't make a big deal about it. It's no, nope, no nope, mommy and daddy are listening to this right now. And well, then- so what's cool about this article yep. is they actually give you alternatives. <laughs> um, and Jessica's really good at this. She says, you know, when, cause we have a two year old, when he's kind of throwing a fit or whatever, um, it's because he can't he can't regulate his own emotions yet. He's only two. And if you punish him for not being able to regulate his emotions, all he learns is shame. Mommy and daddy don't like the fact that I can't control this thing. So you're trying to logic them. It doesn't work. What you need to do is you're, you're, you got to kind of be there with them. And there's a few things that you can do. And this, they actually talked about this in the article, which is amazing. Number one is a sensory technique. So this, these are things that help them alleviate the physical sensations that they're overwhelmed with. And some, th- some of them include swinging, hugging, pressure, uh, you know, jumping on a trampoline, listening to music, you know, um, looking at something sparkly, just helping them learn how to like, cause they have this physical like feeling and they just don't know how to deal with it yet. The other one is to name the emotion and what to do with it. So I can see now, I can I can tell that you're really upset and it's mm-hmm. really tough for you. So mm-hmm. help them name kind of what's going on. Um, offer replacement behaviors. Jessica's really good at this. So like if he's playing with like, he has cars that he plays with and sometimes he'll throw them and we don't want him to throw them because he could hit his infant sister with them. So instead of being like, don't throw cars, we'll be like, hey, throw this instead. And we'll give him like fluffy socks. Or something like that. So you're yeah. giving them a replacement behavior. Yeah. So, so rather than saying, don't do this, do this instead. Mm. You know, it's so hard giving advice around kids. Yeah. You know, I try and catch myself sometimes because I recognize that I have an amazing kid who is like, is really easy. And so I never want to make someone feel like, oh, if you just do this, it'll happen. And so I'm always very careful oh, yeah. about like Man, I feel you. giving, giving like advice with like their kid and stuff like that. The one thing that I, I can say that I think is like, and it's a just like a general rule that I feel makes such a difference is just learning not to react. Mm-hmm. I think that, and I, that's the biggest difference that I You're can see calm. of my, in myself. Totally. If, if I was 25 versus so being So much 40, more effective, right? Right. Just the simple fact, if he can be mad, he can do, he can out, act out and I don't change. Yeah. Yes. That is the thing that I think they is- They can be emotional, but you got to kind of be able to let them be emotional. That's right. Not all, bring your emotions Exactly. In. I feel like there's all kinds of different cool tactics and strategies to handle yeah. it or do yeah. this instead. But the most important thing I think that anybody could take away and, and, and consistent with all kids yeah. is just that you as the adult have to stay consistent and calm. Which, by the way, can be very It's very hard. challenging. It's very, yeah. well, that's why, got a lot of to me, that's work, why it's the, 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 that's why it's the number yeah. one focus. It's yeah. like, that in itself is a task because yeah. you have stress. You and your partner get into it sometimes. There's a, the, there's a lot of variables that will make this exponentially more difficult. Yeah. And so if you can just nail that one thing down, 
that when your kid is acting out or acting crazy well, or this is too yeah where your partner is like you got to be able to lean on them sometimes because it is hard and you're like and they they catch it when you are getting emotional in reacting and then they, let me let me hand, i'll do this for courtney and she'll sometimes do this for me let me take over yeah just yeah. let me take over like i got this and then they'll you know Oh, thank you. Cause like I was getting too riled up, like into the fact that they're getting emotional about it. It was affecting me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's like half of that is like, they're trying to figure out how to calm themselves. That's all part of this developmental process. Like yeah. you, you got to let them experience and f figure that out uh, without like, you know, like imposing uh, this, this rigidity around that. And like, you can only do it this way. Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, like for me, it's, I, I can't get emotionally involved. I have to like be very consistent and like, here's, uh, you know, you can process this however you need to, but like, you're gonna have to figure out how to do this because you can't react like this yeah. every time something doesn't go your way. You just right. can't do that. Yeah. Right, and, right. and your kid will remember rather than remembering what you're trying to teach them, they're going to remember dad was yelling. Yeah. How you yeah. acted. That's you know, it. hundred percent. Doug, when's this episode air? It airs on December 27th. Oh, oh. So after Christmas, but I will say this, if your family buys you stuff that you don't like, here's what I recommend. Take it back, <laughs> get your money back and go to Viore because they got stuff. <laughs> That is amazing. My, I, I have promise a, you'll like there's it. There's the ultimate pitch. Right? I have a, the best at leisure wear. I wearing. have a buddy that I've been telling about Viore for years now, and uh, he's like one of my one of my more fashionable friends. And he just he just called me two days ago for our our discount code for it. And he's like one of those dudes who's like uh, you know he's got his own style and his thing. And so like he, and I, I'm probably I, he probably thinks this of me, right? So he'll show. Oh, you should check this out. I'm like ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? What no, nobody tells me. Yeah, that. yeah, exactly. <laughs> nobody tells me how to dress. You know what I'm saying? I got this, you know? So he's been he's been that guy forever, and I've been trying to introduce it to him forever. And then, of course, I just, what you know, I haven't said anything to him in years about it. And he messaged me. I, I he's, you know what it was? Is the those corduroys? Those corduroys are sick. Yeah, I've, yeah. They, I really like the corduroy pants that they have. I like the long sleeve. I have them on right now. Yeah. Like you know what's sleeves. funny is, um, so I, I don't know. I guess I picture Viore more as like a, a coastal kind of style like because it's athleisure wear but it's also yeah. i don't know like you know you just tend to see a lot more people like i think rocking. most of their stores are like that yeah they're like up on the coast right? yeah so anyway i was like uh uh reconnecting with my friends from college and he lives in kansas and is was all dripped out in in viore and i was i was tripping out on that because i'm like you're in Kansas and you're wearing like all Viore and I guess it's like, you know, he's trying to be like super fashionable, but like in Kansas. Yeah. So there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Who's shouting there. out today? Who had a shout out today? Oh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, I'm going to shout out, uh, uncle laser. So, oh, oh, uncle Lazar. Oh, Lazar. Lazar. Uncle Lazar. I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> no, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or not, but so it's, it's like my favorite, like, bro, he's funny. Like, trash kind of uh, comedian. Yeah. So it's at uncle underscore. So, you know, laser. you know, it's funny. He's how funny. Dude. I did. I, this obviously was not planned because we didn't talk about this. Uh, the guy I'm talking about with Viore is the one who introduced me to him. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the one who sent me, sent me this guy and he's been sending me him for a long time. I actually Very didn't finish. start, didn't yeah. start following him until after about the third or fourth one he sent to me. I was like, okay, this dude's pretty funny. I'm going to start following him. So I like that. Follow. Yeah. He's all underground now, but he's really like getting a lot of followers. Yeah. Days, no, he so will. He'll blow up. Off, his, yeah. his humor's great. Hey, check this out. Organifi is a company we've been with for a long time. They have superfood blends that make it easy and enjoyable to add more variety and nutrition to your day. They're delicious organic powders that you can add to water, stir with a spoon, and enjoy any time of the day for energy, better nutrition, hormone balance, and peace of mind. By the way, they have a new product called Peak Power. Take this before you work out. It'll jazz you up. It's, uh, it's very strong, but it's calming at the same time. So calm, focused, Strong Energy, I help design the product. But again, they have many, many, many other products. They're all organic. Go check them out. Go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then use the code Mind Pump for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is David from Germany. David, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how you doing, fellas? Good, man. How are um, you? Oh, living the dream, living the dream, no complaints. Um... So I had a bit of an interesting one, right? So context of it, I'm a pretty big fella, right? I'm 6'2", 260 pounds. I fluctuate anywhere between like 12 and like 16% body fat, right? Cool. Awesome. I'm getting to a point now where I'm getting a little older and carrying weight around is taking a bit of a toll, right? Like I'm starting to feel it. 
back when I was 25, 21, you know, early, nothing. I was good. Now it's getting a little bit more difficult. So we always talk about like recomp, right? But it's usually in regards to, you know, bigger guys trying to get more muscular and switching over to a more muscular build. What's your guys' advice? Because I can't find anything on recomp from a fairly muscular build down to something a little bit more lean. I'm not really interested in getting skinny per se, but I could I could drop down to 220 and I'd be comfortable, you know? Yeah. What's your body weight now? Uh, around 260. 260? Yeah, big boy. Yeah. Oh man, you're a big boy. Yeah. I mean, you're going to, you could change your training. You could focus more on stamina, endurance, mobility. Mobility goes a long way, by the way, with making your body feel more comfortable. Um, and then it would be food intake, cutting calories. Probably the easiest way just to lose like pounds on the scale yeah. is a low carbohydrate diet, not because it burns more body fat, but because you'll also lose some water weight. So just yeah. lighter, you'll just be lighter. And when there's a guy your size, if I have somebody your size telling me, I'll feel more comfortable feeling lighter. I tend to push them in that direction because uh, you do lose body fat with the low calorie, any kind of diet, but cutting carbohydrates, you tend to lose more weight because of the water weight as well. And people tend to feel more comfortable that way. The The answer is actually really easy and simple, but very difficult to do. And it's, it's difficult, not because the task is so hard, but so the psychological part, typically guys like us that, that put on all that mass, like you like it. You like, I like it. How yeah. Adam throws himself yeah, in there. Like guys yeah, like yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you guys, you guys don't know what it's like to walk around two forty. So you know what I'm saying. So hey, listen, oh, I was there. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, what are you about? These little guys, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That they don't understand. So <laughs> <laughs> this guy's in a different category, Adam. I hate to break it to you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, when you when you I, I, that that's going to be the hardest part. I think for you is going to be the psychological part of shrinking down because you probably are used to being the biggest dude in the room. You fill out all your shirts and, you know, unfortunately when you start going the other direction, you will probably see yourself different than what everybody else does. You lose 15, 20 pounds and you go, Oh my God, I'm getting skinny or I'm getting, I'm losing all kinds of muscle. Everybody else is going to be like, you look amazing. So I think the psychological part is gonna be the hardest thing. Simply cutting your calories and starting to become a guy who runs every once in a while, you'll drop. You'll definitely drop some size and weight for sure, and I think you'd be fine. You know who's uh, going through this is our our good buddy uh, Ben Pakolsky. Have you ever heard him talk about this? No, no, I haven't. I haven't. Okay, so Ben, Pak you know who Ben Pakolsky is? Yeah. So he, I mean, he was like three hundred and something pounds, and when we first uh, linked up with him. This was like exactly the transition in his life that he was going through where he's like, I'm mm -hmm. now he's all longevity focused and he knows that his, you know, he's getting older and the carrying that kind of weight just doesn't feel any good. So he's been on this mission to lose like a hundred pounds of muscle intentionally. And it's been really interesting to watch, uh, watch him go through that process. And, you know, the, of course the grass is always greener on the other side. Everybody hearing that goes like, Oh, it must be nice. But you see them how difficult it is to do that, like to to go that other direction. And I imagine the psychological part has to be one of the greatest hurdles. You know, David, what would actually help me answer this better is is uh, finding out why you want to go down in body weight. What is it that you feel uncomfortable with? Is it is it stamina? Is it joint joint pain? Yeah, I think I think it's I'm feeling it more in my joints. So like I played rugby for six years when I was younger. I was in the Marine Corps. I was a heavy machine gunner in the infantry. A lot of weight. Um, motorcycle accidents. So like I'm, I'm becoming more familiar with my fragility, if you will, as I'm getting older yeah. and like, I I'm, I'm like my knees and shit kind of hurt, you know what I'm saying? And so even just walking around regular, so like I, I've tailored my workouts to be less, you know, I'm not putting up 400 pounds squatting out for reps, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do like lighter weights and more endurance training, but it's just, it's not, the weight, the fat comes off fairly easy for me, you know. When I want to, when I want to tailor my diet and slim down, it's great. But I have no idea how to really drop down like the density or like the muscle, like my mat, my muscle. Basically, oh. I don't know how to shave that off. David, yeah. this is a mobility thing. I'm gonna tell you right now. You'd be very surprised if you focused on mobility, flexibility, range of motion, how much better you'll feel without even having to lose that much weight. Now, if you change your diet so that you got leaner, that would help. Mm. But your training, focusing on mobility, focusing on connecting to different ranges of motion, mass rotation, mass performance. Oh, mass performance and map symmetry, I think would go a long way with making you, and if you, and in Primer and Prime Pro 
with the more specific. That'll make a big difference. In many cases, when you take when you talk about feeling joint pain, you don't even have to lose weight. Yeah, uh, you just have to improve your mobility and connection. Although um, the losing yeah. weight and being in a cut is going to help, it it's definitely gonna, helps. It's going to tamp down inflammation. It's going to bring down the body weight a little bit. I would love to see you run Maps Performance in a cut. That program, like I think, will address the way you feel right now. And I bet going through that in a calorie deficit yep. would give you exactly what you want. Yep. Uh, that's also awesome. that's 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 kind of that's exactly what I was looking for because I my go to is actually like I, I work with split a lot. I, I like I like the rhythm. I like the weights. I like the whole thing, but. It's just it's not working out for me for the goals that I'm trying to transition to. So that's yeah. super helpful. You yeah. know, even even David, I mean, mass performance. We'll send that to you because I think that's a great uh, that's great advice from Adam. But even with like traditional strength training exercises, let's say you took your weight, let's say you take your normal workout weight, cut it in half, and then what you're going to do is you're going to focus on slowing down the reps, and you're going to challenge your range of motion. You're going to try and get more of a stretch, more of a squeeze slower repetitions that alone often gets somebody's joint pain to feel a lot better. So just going lighter, trying to improve or increase range of motion. And of course do it appropriately, right? You don't want to go like so deep with your range of motion that you hurt yourself. But the idea is, okay, if you normally squat with, let's say 315, I'm going to bring it down to, let's say 170 or 160. And I'm going to go real slow and I'm going to try and go down as deep as I can, you know, within my particular limits <clears throat> slow the reps down and really focus on the stretch and the bottom and the squeeze at the top. And that, that'll make a difference. No, oh, awesome. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. D yeah. No. Doug's going to send over mass performance, bro. And then like Sal said, after that symmetry would be a good program to follow up. Yep. Okay. Awesome. No, yeah. I really appreciate that guys. It's, it's the, that's the, the gaps in the knowledge I was looking for. You, you, uh, so yeah, no, I appreciate it. You All got right, it, brother. David. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Have a good one, fellas. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Yeah, man. Goddamn I mean, monster. Yeah, guys like you you and him, man. You guys probably, you, you beasts. It must be so hard don't trying be, to lose muscle. Don't be jealous, little guy. Bro, <laughs> hey, hey, he's trying to get smaller. Yeah. You talking about getting smaller, you're getting smaller by the minute. Yeah. Well, Very different. Wow. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I do not have that problem. I do not have the, if I, if I just stop, yeah. stop lifting weights and I look at a treadmill, hey, my muscle falls What's the heaviest you ever been? Yeah. 240 something. I've been 240 yeah, and I'm right. shorter than you. Same. And yeah. my frame cannot support 240. Yeah, like but you don't, you don't have the proof for that. That's You say you Oh, I got no the one's, pictures. One's, I will no not post good. the pictures. Let me tell you. Yeah. you ever I want to see them. Yeah, you ever yeah. seen a meatball with yeah. legs, arms yeah. and legs? Yeah. yeah. That's what I look like. Yeah, well, uh, too, to, to your mass performance point, like I I was curious to see if he's ever even trained in like different planes because yeah. like that that's one of those like inevitabilities as well. If you're just like always sagittal plane yep. movement, you're always heavy lifting, like yep. you're always doing that same pattern pattern and routine like yeah. you are going to be uncomfortable like you put the mass on that's a big feat in itself to get to the point where you can put that kind of size uh but to live in it comfortably takes all that extra listen effort. if i if my if i'm squatting heavy consistently consistently yeah. over time what ends up happening after a while is i start to feel it in my hips and if i keep pushing i'll start to feel it in my knees and then what i do is i back way off and i'll do split stance exercises or and or traditional squats with much lighter weight and just challenge the range of motion and it's gets rid of the pain yep. it's like magic you know david hopefully listens to this uh my advice when you go through performance is this so and i know we're joking about me comparing myself to him because i'm in no nowhere near this guy's level or whatever but i will say that one of the best things i ever did was when i went on that probably year stint of just mobility just trying to be a mobility yeah. guy and i literally did not care about my foundational training. Like, yeah, if I got around to squatting and deadlifting, doing my movements, I it was like every day was focused around improving my mobility. So when you look at performance, I, my advice to you is to look at the mobility days as if those were your foundational those days. Those are the important those ones. Those are the ones you never miss. And then, hey, make sure you incor incorporate the, 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 the lifts and the stuff that we have written out for foundational days. But because of your goals and where you're currently at and that you could totally – afford to lose 20 pounds of muscle and still be jacked as fuck don't stress the lifting part as much as you stress the mobility part make that the the the, the foundation of your training our next caller is james from california what's up james how can we help you what's going on guys how are you good, good having you awesome hey um real quick just wanted to say thank you i mean i know this is what everyone else says too but um been listening for about a year now and you know just the insight that you guys have given and just, I just started maps aesthetic about six, seven weeks ago and seen a huge change 
just in my lifts and my workout routine. I feel like I was just always working out too hard before this. And so just kind of opened my eyes to pacing and things like that. So thank you for that. Awesome. Awesome. Brad. Thank you. But yeah, my question is, is so I'm 31, 6'4", 225, 230, about 18, 19% body fat right now. But I'm also type one diabetic. I've worked out for the past, you know, consistently for 10 years now, but nutrition's always been a problem for me. And on top of that, I work remote. So I live in Nashville, but then I travel to California for about two weeks a month going back and forth. They sell solar. So um, when I'm at home, nutrition's easy. I can cook. I got my kitchen. I can, I can prep, do everything that I need. But when I'm out of town and I'm in hotels, traveling, things like that, nutrition is always tough. And so for someone that wants to have the right macros, make sure that I'm ordering and getting healthy food, what's the best way for me to be able to just be confident in my nutrition when I'm on the road? Like, is there, you know, good rush, like, cause I go to like the Chipotle's, the, the cafe Rio's just try to find good chicken and rice sort of things. But like, what are good tips? What are things that I should be following to maintain good nutrition? Uh, right. Here's my staples. When I travel, if I want to, you know, focus on eating healthy is I'll find, uh, I'll eat, uh, some kind of a meat, some kind of a protein. So steak, I'll have them substitute whatever it comes with, with, uh, vegetables, I'll tell them not to add any oil and put olive oil on the side. So you can find that at most sit down restaurants. So like steak and then a side of vegetables and nothing else. And then burger joints now will tend to lettuce wrap their burgers. And so I'll do lettuce wrapped okay. burger and that the macros and calories and everything seem to be uh, pretty good. And that's about it. Now Chipotle, you already know the choices there. Um, you right. mentioned cafe Rio, you know, the choices there, but that's about it. So if I'm somewhere and I see a burger joint, and I'm like, okay, I want to eat kind of healthy. I'll go in there and say, hey, can you do a lettuce wrap uh, for this burger? And they'll say yes, and that's it. And then I'll just eat that. They have a, a Panda Express out there? Yeah. I mean, almost anywhere I feel like has Panda somewhere or not. But. That's how I feel the same way, too. That's actually one of my favorite staple. Like, it's 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, or I'm in a hurry. Yeah. Like, and they have they serve you know, grilled chicken, man. They're dr grilled, chicken, right. grilled chicken thighs and reasonably priced, too. I double up on the chicken. And white For rice, sure. and that's like that used to, when I was competing and traveling and stuff. That was like a staple fast food place. That like if I had to, to mm -hmm. get something to get my macros in. Um, so and, and obviously there's people listening going like, oh my god, I can't believe you're recommending Panda Express. But the truth is, when you're in a pinch like something like that, I mean that's a that's a way better right. that's a way better choice than you you know, going through something and getting Taco Bell or some bullshit like that. That's not going to hit your macros. The other thing that I would suggest too is that. When I'm in a situation like this, like the thing that I don't want to do, you hear me on the podcast talk about don't eat like an asshole. Like that's what really screws you up is that when you're traveling, you don't get quite your workouts in as much as you do when you're at home. And then on top of that, you overeat and you overeat bad choices. So like, exactly. So like, yeah. yeah. So like what I would do is I would be less worried about hitting the perfect macros. Ideally, you want to target it and I'd be more trying to be disciplined about not overeating. So that like, so like utilizing tools like intermittent fasting and, and having a smaller window of eating, like I use strategies like that when I'm traveling and I'm in a pinch and I know I'm not going to be able to get four good, balanced, perfect meals. So, Hey, this is a perfect mm -hmm. time for me to go. I'm going to go low calorie. I'm going to go low calorie for the, this week or two that I'm out of town. Sure. And, and no, that doesn't mean I'm still not trying to hit the protein. I'm not trying to do that. But what I just want to make sure I don't do is eat like an asshole, over consume, and then also not hit my macros and then also not be lifting. And so that's the For real, sure. the real challenge. And so I would rather not hit my macros and be low calorie than to, uh, over consume, uh, calories when I also know that I'm traveling and not getting as many lifts in as I would when yeah. I'm back home. And I, I would bring a protein totally. shake with me for breakfast or cause breakfast yeah. is a little harder sometimes. Creatures of habit, dude. Or yeah. creatures of, now creatures of habit. Now that yeah, we work with them, one. that's what I bring. Cause it's an oatmeal packet and it's got the protein and everything. Okay. And it's super easy to add some hot water to it and you're done. Yeah. I love that for something like that. Is there, is there like a prepackaged protein that you guys would recommend? Because, I mean, I can bring my my powders from home, but, you know, when space is limited in a suitcase. Just get a Ziploc. Like, get a big Ziploc bag and put, uh, and I'll do, I'll put the scoop in it. So I'll put 
sure. you know, three, four servings in there, and then I'll put the scoop in the bag. Oh, I do get the, the air out. I do the, the they make little, you know, I say dime bags for like selling drugs. That's, not, that's <laughs> yeah, what that's I should. That's not enough though. <laughs> <that's what laughs> they make a, they yeah, make a they double up they, half team. sandwich yeah. bags. Yeah, yeah, there you go. They're like half sandwich bags, yeah. and I do individual scoops in that. So I'll do like if I'm traveling, okay. I'll, I'll, that way I don't have to measure and carry the scoop with me. I just put them in the individual. Totally. But I mean, Creatures of Habit's got thirty to thirty-two grams of protein in that oatmeal. So to me, like okay. that's and breakfast is always one of the hardest when you're traveling. So mm-hmm. I, I would fly with four or five of those, or however many days you're gone. I have one for every day you're gone. That's my breakfast hit lunch is panda or one of the rio right. or one of those places and you're, you're on the right track but uh, but honestly you, and you probably know this like the 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 thing that you do that's worst is over consuming not hitting your macros and also not training it's that trifecta that really, sure. that sets you back from all your good work you did at home so at the bear yeah. i would i would practice eating low calorie on as many days as i could on those days just for that that reason yeah, all I got okay. is a Paleo awesome. Valley beef sticks. So oh, yeah, yeah, that totally brings yeah. with me. And actually, I'm going through this right now because I'm going to be traveling uh, for a week or so. And, uh, you know, having that with Creatures of Habit and then also, you know, green juice is one that I'll pack in there as well. Because sometimes, like, even, you know, good vegetables are hard to find in, in a pinch. Mm-hmm. And, like, so that's something, too. Like, late night, most most mostly it's all these, like, fast food restaurants that are open, which the options are right. pretty much terrible. So uh, to be able to come with that you do like a lettuce wrap like sal said but really it's like if i have a green juice there at least then i can have you know my, my stomach tends to benefit from that as well okay awesome thanks guys you got it yeah. man thanks for calling in for sure take care take it easy you they guys, don't, they you don't guys, serve panda meat right <laughs> did you guys know that about panda express i did they actually do grilled chicken no thighs. i didn't they I do grilled chicken thighs and it's like you do double meat like i don't know where i could get like 13 dollars a thirteen dollar meal that's like yeah protein carb. seventy grams yeah. of protein and, and good carbohydrates. It was like a staple when I was competing and I was late night and that, that was like Panda Express was like yeah, the go-to. Panda Express and Chipotle are like bodybuilding fast food places. I know no, like those are. are the two totally. Those oh, are the yeah, two Chipotle's, places. That, yeah. yeah, definitely. A good yeah, I, I I do I you know I like what you said about eating. That's what I try to do. I try to just yeah. eat less. Yeah. So I, I do a lot of fasting because that because that's what becomes detrimental just, right yeah, here. Because yeah, right? okay, let's be when you travel rarely ever do I hear anybody who says they hit the gym more or even the same as what they do when they're, tr- when yeah. they're home, right? Mm-hmm. When you're home, you're most consistent with your lifting. So you probably miss workouts. And then on top of that, you're probably sedentary. You're yeah. flying, you're sitting in a hotel room. So you're not moving very much. And then you, on top of that, you over consume and not hit your macros. Cause you do something, you know, carb heavy or at a gas station or, and so, and that's really what sets that work back. If you just yeah. simply said, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to either go low calorie or intermittent fast on some of these days. And, and even if you didn't hit your macros, you know, for a week or two, okay, you what? You're, you're not going to lose a pound or two pounds of muscle. No, you're fine. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're going to be fine. And it even works out well because usually when I travel, I'm doing stuff for work, which means I want to be sharp anyway, which right. means I'm going to eat less anyway to make me more sharp. So right. it all works out well. Next caller is Mike from Maryland. What's happening, Mike? How can we help you? Hey, guys. How you doing? Good, good, good. good. All right. I appreciate you uh, taking my call today. I'm a big fan of you guys. And, uh, of course, I appreciate you, Sal, always responding to my DMs on Twitter about whatever random questions I have. So always appreciate your content and your time. You know, I don't respond to anybody. I think you're the only person I respond to. <laughs> I swear to God. I ignore almost everything. The, luck, <laughs> the <laughs> luck of the draw. Yeah. So let me get let me get right to it. So um, in the past seven years, I've lost about 150 pounds. Wow. Um, I was hovering around 420 pounds for the longest time. Oh. I've been doing this through, so through strength and conditioning, uh, strength, excuse me, strength training. Um, and a little bit of cardio. Um, I started listening to you guys probably about two years ago, and it's been a real life changer for me. So I appreciate that. Um, unfortunately, now I've gained about 20 pounds back, and I feel like my metabolism has definitely st- uh, stalled. I do feel stronger, but I can see some you know, growth in my stomach. Uh, at my lowest, I was sitting around 271 pounds. Um, right now, I'm six foot three. Around 291 pounds. Um, I'm consistently eating between 2,900 and 3,100 calories a day, um, hitting 40% protein, um, 20, 30% are coming from fat and the rest are carbs. Um, so I was doing three days a week using like MAPS anabolic, um, lifting three days a week. And I feel like before that, when I was lifting five, six days a week, I was getting my best results, feeling a lot stronger. So my question to you guys is, is going f- from a five day a week strength training program down to a three day a week, hurting my metabolism. Should I go back to five days? Do I need the volume? 
should I reverse? I know I'm scared to eat more calories. And I know it's mental. You guys talk about it all the time, but you know, I, I'm, I'm here for whatever you guys can do. It's not hurting. It's not hurting your metabolism, but you're feeling the effects of the, the movement that you're not doing. Well, are you, are you doing the three trigger sessions a days on the, on the off days? Yeah. So I was doing the, uh, full body three days a week and then the three trigger sessions a day. And then when I'm doing the trigger sessions, I always try to make sure I'm getting the 10,000 steps a day. Oh, okay. oh yeah. You're, okay. Doing, you're doing good. Although you might just need to change your workout a little bit. Your calories aren't bad. Yeah. I mean, your calories aren't bad. I they're think not they bad. Could be, they're low, bro. I think they could be higher. Yeah. Yeah. For his size. They're low. I think so too. And I was, I was trying to hit like 34, 3,500 and I felt like I'd feel great for the first couple of days doing it. And then like, I just want to see, I'm not worried about the number on the scale. I just want to see the body composition come down. I want to, I want to look good, feel good. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Mike, how long were you, uh, you know, at 400 pounds and then how long did it take you to lose 150 pounds? I was over 400 pounds for at least 15 years. And then when I really got into it, I was dieting at like 2,600, 2,700 calories, which was a no, no, but it got me the results I needed to. Um, and I feel like if I wanted to lose weight, I'd have to be back down at that point again. So it took me, I was probably start 2016 to 2019. I really got down from that 420 to 270 area. And then since about 2020 or so, been teetering back up a little bit when I started doing the three day a week. So you lost 150 pounds over the course of two years, a year? Uh, from t about three, three and a half, four years. Okay. Not, so, by the way, not bad either. That's not the too bad. 2,600 yeah. calories, uh, that's not bad, dude. Most people that do this do it, they go lower and do crazy amounts of cardio. That's what really yeah. fucks them up. So and, you, and you, you a pretty good job. And you got to mm -hmm. consider now, you know, when, when you're, when I've worked with people who've lost a tremendous amount of weight, it takes a long time to get their metabolism to respond past a certain point. Now you're not doing too bad. I've, I've worked with people in your, in your situation who in order to maintain their body weight, they had to eat like 1700 calories, 1600 calories. So the body can be quite, become quite resistant. There's a genetic component there as well. Although I do feel like, uh, you could probably bump your calories by two or 300 and you would just end up getting stronger, maybe building a little muscle and then taking your time with that type of a reverse diet. You could stagger it, right? So you could go 3,300 calories a day for three weeks, then do a week where you go down to 3,100 3, or 3,000 and then go back up to maybe 3,400 calories and kind of stagger it like that okay. and then play that game, right? Watch yourself, see how you feel, watch the body fat percentage, you know, see how the gym, the results in the gym are. And then determine whether yeah. or not you go higher or lower, but you're, you're not doing too bad. I mean, that's, you, 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 I think you could go higher with your calories, but that's not too bad at all. You, considering where you came from, you, you, you know, where I, I would like, you know what I'd love to see you do. Um, I'd love to put you on maps power lift. I'd like okay. to, put, I'd like to put you on power lift. I'd like to do the calories just like Sal was saying. And I just would, I would let, let's get strong at those lifts. Like that's kind of like, I would like to put you on a phase when that that's the the conversation. Let's not worry too much about, where the weight is, so long as it stays manageable where you're at. I don't really care if it goes up or down five or so pounds, whatever. Let's just let, let's follow, let's follow what Sal's saying nutritionally. Let's do power lift and let's get strong as fuck over the next three months and and then see what happens there. And hopefully, <clears throat> uh, if I know what I'm talking about, you're you're gonna get your calories up because of what Sal's saying. And then that's new stimulus of training that way. Hopefully you build some strength, hopefully you build the metabolism up. I think you'd see great results from that. I could see that. Now, is there a certain point of time where I should stay in a maintenance surplus and in a cut for, for what I'm trying to do? Because obviously at the end of the day, I want to get the composition down and lose a little more weight, but I definitely want to build the strength up. So like I want to do everything, right? So is there, do you guys recommend a certain amount for someone like me who should be at a maintenance or surplus or cut? That's hard. You know, that's hard to say. I like to tell people to get to a point where they're comfortable um, with what they're eating or they feel like they're eating like, oh man, I'm eating a lot. And then I, you know, cut them from there. But there's such a big genetic variance with something like this, and we can't discredit the fact that for you know a long time, you're at a very very high uh, body weight, and you know there's some debate as to whether or not this is true or not. But I do feel like the body has a bit of a memory, and you know you've really only been doing this 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 part of what you're doing for a short period of time in comparison to how long you were over 400 pounds. So right. I would I, you know give yourself some time. How old are you? I'm 34. Yeah, give yourself some time. What'll happen is over time, it'll get easier and easier and easier for you. But you know, consider the fact that for I think you said for 15 years, you were over 50, you know, 400 pounds, um, and your lifestyle was much different. So you, you, it's almost like you got to probably live the other way as long or longer than you did the, the way before. 
before you really it really starts to become easier. Yeah, I mean, if mo- even more specific, if you were a client of mine, th- this is what it would look like. I would follow what Sal's advice is around the nutrition. I would follow Maps Powerlift. The goal would be this. I, the thing I, I'm just talking to you every day. Let's not worry about the scale so much. Let's get strong as shit and let's get your calories up. Our goal is at the end of three months. I've got you north of 3,500 calories a day and not putting on any body fat and just getting stronger. And then I'd train, then I'd switch you into a new MAPS program. And when I switch you, I might give you like a month of a cut just to show you what we've already done. Like, hey, we've built your metabolism up a little bit. Let's now cut you back down to 2,900 calories. Let's watch you lean out a little bit for a month. And then boom, let's go right back to reverse dieting again, increasing calories. And I'd kind of mess with it just like that over the course of two to three months, giving you these little mini cuts just to show you the hard work that you're doing and the results from it and see your body composition kind of change. But then really the focus is let's get that metabolism up as much as we can. But all in all, bro, just so you know, too, you're doing a great job and be patient. Yeah. Because, Thank you. Because Thank you're, you. yeah, you're, uh, you're doing a great job. So I, I also would be saying that to you, too, is like, hey. Don't overthink this. You're 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 on the right track. You ain't got a broken metabolism. You've done a hell of a job already. You didn't fuck it up the way you did it. Like I'd be very happy with what you're doing. Are you? How do you feel at three thousand calories a day? By the way, do you feel really hungry, or do you feel like you're okay? No, I feel okay uh, right now. I, I, this week I'm at like twenty nine hundred. I feel fine. And then like weeks when I eat thirty three, thirty four hundred, I feel great. I think anywhere between twenty nine to twenty eight hundred up to thirty five, I feel. Fine. Oh, well, see, yeah, you're good. Because, you know, sometimes we overthink it. We're like, oh, I'm supposed to be, you know, 4,000 calories a day. Or I'm supposed to, like, if you feel okay, you feel okay. So it's, it's not that big of a deal. I would still go in the direction that we're saying, though, just to make this uh, not a rebound situation. Because the odds that somebody loses 150 pounds and then gains it back over the course of their life is quite high. And so what, yeah. you're, what you're doing is you're making that a, a smaller and smaller chance. Because you're getting your body, your metabolism faster, you're getting strong. You're developing a different relationship with food, and that, that does take time. So I'd still move in that direction, but I wouldn't worry so much about, oh, I should get up to 3,800 calories. If you feel good, then you feel good and you're okay. Okay. And we think that three days a week is fine for someone like me. I just feel like I need the volume. I think it's fine, but if you want to go with more volume, well, you know, power, power lift is more Maps power lift yeah, is five days, days a week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to send you Maps power lift. So we're going to send you Maps power lift. Sweet. I would love to see you do that. Follow the advice that Sal said about nutrition. And then, like I said, the goal during that that three month period of that program is just to get strong as hell and to slowly increase those calories. And then at the end of the program, I'd switch it to a new maps program. And then when we get into the new one, I would actually do like a little bit of a mini cut just to kind of show you like what what you did, you know, just so you could see like, hey, this is what what happens when we focus on strength for three months. We increase your calories a little bit, and then I pull you back down by cutting five to seven hundred calories, and then watch watch what your your body comp does. I feel like I need to come out there and just let you train me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, I tell you what, why don't uh, I d- I'll give, have Doug give you access to the private forum so you're in there too, so we keep an eye on you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you guys so you much. It. You All right, it, Mike. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Hey, Doug, make sure you get my crab cakes, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. don't worry. Okay. You got to share them now. That's not. That's not, you know he's not do, he's not doing too bad. He's doing great. You know, yeah. you when I've worked with people who've lost over hundred pounds. Oftentimes I get them and it's like, wow, we're in a, okay, we're in a really tough spot, but he's eating 3000 calories a day. Yeah. Um, he, he says he feels good on it. That's yeah. the other part that's important. I think he's doing all right. Well, it's just a time thing. Yeah. Him, you know, spreading it out for over three to four years. Like that's yep. huge because most clients, like you said, I've had, it's been like a year or less, you know, yep. it, it was just extreme dieting, extreme cardio. So yeah, I think. He's doing. He's doing quite well. No, he's doing a really good job. You know what we didn't ask him. I wish I would have asked. Actually, was to just to get a little bit deeper into like how he approaches his lifts mentally. So sometimes when someone has been fixated on losing that much weight, uh, even when they're running a quote unquote strength phase, it's kind of you know like Bernie. Burn, burn, burn. Yeah, yeah. It's a little more circuit esque, calorie driven. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's more like sweat, burn, keep Mm -hmm. it moving type of deal versus like. You know, are you, and that's why I said power lift, right? Yeah. Cause I, I really would I like want that advice. I really would want his focus to be like, let's just, I mean, you're a, you're a big dude. Like, let's see, let's see what we get this squat up to. Let's see what we get this deadlift up to. Let's see how str- And And I know as a byproduct in a calorie surplus, if he's focused that way, he's going to put gonna some, go to muscle. He's yeah. going to build muscle yeah. and that, and that muscle then is going to speed that metabolism up for him. And then I could show him, Hey, let's cut for a little bit. And then you could see like, Oh wow. Okay. That's what we just Give did. Give him some reward. Right. Yeah. For sure. Our next caller is Teresa from Nebraska. Teresa, how can we help you? Hi. Thank you guys so much for having me on the show. Um, Again, I don't know if you recognize me, but I was on 
around uh, April, May, June time frame uh, this summer. So, um, and I want to say congrats to Sal on the new baby, Thank Talia. You. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so I'm just going to read uh, my question here. So um, I think I have a fairly uh, unique question for you guys. I've been strength training. Uh, in my email, it says 10 plus years, but actually I calculated it's like 18 years. Um, I've built up a pretty significant amount of muscle. I recently got engaged on Thanksgiving and have um, eight months until my wedding. I feel my arms are actually too muscular and I would like more of a feminine look. Um, my body fat percentage is around 12% currently, which I think means I have um, to lose some muscle and to lose some size um, on my arms. Um, do you think I should incorporate cardio? I do walk um, like three to four miles a day um, and strength train um, anywhere between like three and five days a week. Um, I was doing anabolic. Um, I did get good results, but now I want to lose some size, I guess. Um, would you do this with diet alone? Um, and then just for reference, I weigh about 123. I'm 5'3", um, fairly strong. I squat about 220, um, bench 135, and then I deadlift 275. Damn, <laughs> That's real strong. You're strong. <laughs> That's real you. strong. Uh, Teresa, I got, good and, I got some good and bad news for you. Yeah. <laughs> so the bad news is your approach is going to be all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the good news is I have the answer for you. Okay. Wait, I, well, before if, you give the answer, I have one question. Okay. And this is your body, so you can decide what the hell you want. But just out of curiosity, what does your fiance think? Mm. <laughs> does his opinion even matter? Yes, it wow. does. Hey, hey, you're not even married yet. No, you guys are uh, one. Yeah. So. I bet he likes them arms. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's here's what here's the thing. Okay. Mm. Feminine and masculine. Yeah, muscle has plays a role, but body fat percentage plays a higher role. You're 12% body fat. You're really lean. If you mm -hmm. gained 10 pounds of body fat, you would look more feminine. That's it. You don't need to lose any muscle. I can tell you right now, it's not because you have too much muscle on your body. It's because your body fat percentage is too low. 12% mm -hmm. for a woman is almost low enough to prevent her from getting a period on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Um, and I don't know if that's already happened to you or not, but that's, that's pretty close. If you got your body fat percentage up to like 17%, which is still lean, then you would look, then you would, the, what you're looking for in terms of looking feminine would happen. It's because your body fat percentage is too low. It's not because you have too much muscle. And I've encountered this so many times with uh, female clients who are fitness fanatics and they would come to me and be like, oh, I'm too muscular. I'm too muscular. And I'd say, well, and I convince them like, well, let's just get you get, gain some body fat. And then sure enough, they're like, oh my God. I, I, and by the way, looking lean or being very lean makes the arms look really muscular. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. you, it's not the size. Like I can lose an inch on my arms and get shredded and they'll look bigger than they did when they were actually bigger just because I'm super lean. I also okay. think I also think you need to do a little check in with yourself because I think we're we're our biggest critics when it comes to things like this yeah. and and uh, I could tell you don't like my advice cuz <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to gain body fat, do you? Well, okay, so we when we had talked about this before, um that was the advice was like cutting back on all the intensity and everything and then at that point I hadn't um cycled for a while. Um, and so I have gained like almost over 2% or, uh, two pounds of body fat since then. So I guess I'm trending in the right direction. I don't know. Maybe I just need to periodically check in. And, yeah. yeah. Mm. So <laughs> wait, wait, when were you on the show last? Uh, like June, I think maybe May or June. So from June till December, you gained two pounds of body fat. <laughs> that and, bad? And you? No, and, that's, and we went through. Uh, we went nothing. Through, yeah, that's not. No, bad. that's uh, you're, you're you're like in a you're like in a 10, 10 calorie surplus. Yeah. No, no, no. You got to go get yourself in like a three hundred calorie surplus. Get okay. your body fat up to like get above fifteen. Look, I'm not even. I'm not telling you to get chunky i'm telling you to go to go from too lean to lean okay so 17 percent smooths it out of it 17 percent is like bikini lean for for a female like you look good you're lean you got definition 12 percent to maintain for a female is too lean so if you're looking for the feminine look uh mm -hmm. it's the body fat percentage i'm gonna tell you that right now now if your body fat percentage was in the you know in the 20s and then you're like, my arms are too big. Then we would talk a little bit differently. But I don't think this is a size issue. I think it's just mm. that you're too ripped. You're too lean. And that's not healthy. You'll find when you're by, by the way, if you go in a proper surplus, Teresa, your hormones are going to balance. 
Your energy is going to improve. Your hair is going to strengthen. Your nails are going to strengthen. Your skin's going to strengthen. You're going to feel like you look younger. You're going to have more energy and your libido is going to improve. And I, and I can say this with full confidence because 12% is too lean to maintain for a female when it comes to health. It just is. So that's the answer right there. Now, whether you take my advice or not, that's different, but I, I know it's tough. And I know it's tough, especially if you're like really into this. But I, all you got to do is I, I get you in it. Whatever your calories are at now, I would add 500 calories to that. Just add 500 and just stick to it and just work out in the gym. And don't weigh yourself. Don't weigh yourself. And you know what? I, I bet your fiance will probably give you compliments along the way. Because he been, probably wants to see you healthy. Have you been running our programs? I was doing anabolic. Yeah. Anabolic. Um, I found a little bit with, with uh, aesthetic. Um, mm -hmm. I just got symmetry as well, but the aesthetic, I think I was a little worried because it was just like too much volume for what you guys had said before. Yeah. So trying not to be in the gym seven days a week. Yeah. Before yeah. you lifted, before you started lifting weights, were you an athlete? Yeah, I did um, gymnastics and then I ran for a long time. I was yeah. a cheerleader for about seven years. So. Oh boy. We're painting the picture. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you ever deal with, uh, you don't have to answer this if you want to, but you, have you ever had challenges with eating any, any dis, Dysfunctional eating patterns? Yep, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Gain body fat. Yeah. That's All it. Right. Gain body fat. And this can be hard yes. for you, but track your calories and add 500. And it might be easier for you to do it like this. Because when I've worked with people like you, the, my, the strategy that worked well for me was to get them to add a 500 calorie meal to their normal diet or add a 500 calorie shake to their normal mm -hmm. diet rather than just trying to eat more throughout the day. So they would just take an extra 500 calorie meal or 400 calorie meal, and it could be a shake, and just add that to what you're currently doing. And then don't weigh yourself. And don't pay attention to when the clothes start to feel different, try and not paying attention to that. But definitely don't weigh yourself and get your body fat percentage to come up a little bit. But keep strength training. Oh yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and then watch what happens. Trust the process. It'll be tough to feel yourself gaining weight. It'll be tough to see yourself feeling like you're bigger, but just stay with it and pay attention to the health markers, energy, libido, hair, nails, skin, um, you know, sleep, all those things. Pay attention to those things. Doug, is that her? Yeah. That's her. That's her, Andrew. You look really good, dude. Yeah. You look really, yeah. yeah, you look really good. I think a lot of this stuff is your, your, your own psychological shit. That's what I think. Of course, I, th I think you. I think that's the real answer. More than like the the programming and nutrition and stuff like that. I think you. I think you look good. Look Are, good. I, did, did your cycle come back by, since the last time we met? It's gotten more regular. Yep. Okay. Is it is it regular regular or just better? Not quite. It's better. Yeah. Let's yeah. go. Let's try. Yeah. Try try getting your body fat up to at least fifteen percent. Right. I'll, I'll aim for seventeen. Do you guys have any plans to have kids anytime soon or at all? Yeah, that's uh, he's still in school, so that's like a two and a half year goal. Yeah, that's that's the first thing the doctor's going to say to you. Yeah. I mean, even Katrina, who uh, I I don't think it, the, Katrina doesn't look crazy lean, but she has a lean body fat percentage, and that was when we were trying to get pregnant. They when told we, her to get body fat. Yeah, she had to she had to lay off and increase calories. Body fat is an important, and I know I know when when we when we we listen to fitness uh, podcasts and we're, it's always about losing body fat, but body fat is essential. You have to have a certain amount of body fat and more body fat is important for women than it is for men. A guy at 12% body fat is at a healthy body fat percentage. A, a woman at 12% body fat, it's okay to get there, but then you got to come out of it and staying around there is just, a, a woman is, it's typically unhealthy to go below 15 typically for long periods of time. So, and seven, look, 15 to 17 is still really lean. You still look, mm -hmm. you're still going to look like an athlete. You're still going to look lean and all that stuff. Yeah. So. She looks a lot more shredded right there, Andrew. Yeah. Is that, that's, is that further back? Uh, okay. Yeah. That's for like, you look leaner there. The first one you showed me, I thought that looked, she looked really like, like a good I mean, lighting and all that stuff too. But yeah. I mean, you gotta, I, I, mean, I would I look can at, see, I can see the separation in her yeah. quads so that she's super lean. Yeah. Right I would look at the health markers. But just, you're, you're right. Just, yeah. You just need to eat. Go have, go have a fucking cheeseburger, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Go have a couple cheeseburgers, dude. Yeah, yeah. You know? And the <laughs> fact that you're as strong, you know, it's on my program. You know, here I'm going to pump you up a little bit, all right, Teresa. I'm going to make you feel better. The fact that you're as strong as you are at 12 percent body fat, mm -hmm. if you go in a calorie surplus and trust what I'm saying and allow yourself to get your body fat percentage up, you're going to be one of the strongest chicks in your gym. If you're not already, you yeah. will for sure be. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be strong as fuck. Yeah, yeah. So enjoy this process. Do that. Yeah, is. go in a little bulk and and have fun with it. Yeah, pretty sure she already is, bro. Yeah. 
<laughs> clubs, clubs. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm at like 120, well, to even 150 grams of protein right now. So how would you add that? Carbs or fat? Carbs and fats. Carbs and fats. So I said, yeah, your protein. Go have, go have a fucking burger. Go have a milkshake. Yep. <laughs> so eating more protein is okay, or should I just not? Yeah, no, you're fine with more protein. Yeah, it, it'll be yeah, but it, how's your appetite? Do you find it? Would you find it hard to eat more? Um. It really depends on the day, I think. How, I mean, how yeah. how obsessed are you with eating clean too? Because I that, that's why I mean, I'm I'm halfway joking with the comments around the cheeseburger and the milkshake, but yeah. maybe you do need yeah. that. Well, that's what I'm yeah. saying. If you, I mean, if you're if you're really obsessive with the way you eat, and you're like, oh, okay, I want to. I mean, that's not even how I would do this with you. Yeah. Like Sal was saying earlier, I'd eat the way you always eat, and then I'd be like, hey. Have a cheeseburger at night before you go to bed. That's have a it. milk. I would like, right. or you like watching movies, have some popcorn. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would let you, I would want you to have some flexibility in your diet and enjoyment. Yeah, and especially if you find, because protein is so satiating that eating another 500 calories in, from protein is going to be hard because you're already <laughs> high protein diet. So carbs, carbs, fats, a little bit of protein is fine, but like a, a smoothie, you know, a high, like a, like a, a smoothie with fruit and some peanut butter. You know, three, four, five hundred calories. You can add a glass of whole milk to each meal. That's another way you can add like three, four hundred calories. You know, mm -hmm. just just think of it that way. And the, the burger and stuff like that would be totally fine too. Okay. Awesome. All right. Don't skip the French fries though, huh? Teresa, please <laughs> please yeah. hey, listen, keep keep in contact with us. I want to know how you do. Are you in our forum? Okay, cool. You in our forum? Uh I am, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. G give us some give us let us know what happens. I, I want to keep keep following up with you. Okay, will do. Thank you guys. Thank All you. Right. All right, Angie. I appreciate the the clips because it gives a little bit better yeah. perspective. I mean, she's she's ripped. Yeah, dude. Twelve. Yeah. 12 I mean, as soon as I saw in her question, she was twelve percent. She's like, "Do I need to? How do I lose muscle?" I'm like, "No, no, no. You need to gain body fat. Mm -hmm. Body fat is feminine. Yeah. yeah. You know, you get a woman who's like, look, uh, you know this, Adam. You've been to competitions. You see the women on stage, mm -hmm. and you look at them, and they look. The, the face looks weathered. They look. It's got a masculine look because they're so lean. Yeah, then they go off season. And, yeah. Then they go off season. They gain like 15, 20 pounds of body fat, and all of a sudden they look amazing. They got the muscle. They're still relatively lean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've got the curve and the shape. Yep. And the health. You got the health. I mean, she gained two pounds since we talked to her last in June or July. That's nothing. She's afraid of eating for, more for food. sure. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, that's why. I mean, the advice to me is that's why cheeseburger, milkshake. Yeah. I, I can tell. She has she has some obsession around her food. Yeah. So even when we told her increase, I mean, you do the math. It was like, yeah. oh, you had ten extra calories. Like, come on, dude. Mm -hmm. Go. I mean, what's the positive part? Uh, positive part of of being in the position she's in, she can get away with kind of overdoing it eating wise at first. Like she can have the milkshake, and she's not going to put four yeah. percent body fat on no. from a couple milkshakes. So it's like enjoy. The extra calories a little bit, but I have a feeling that she obsesses over the totally. food so much that she has a hard time with that. Totally. So, Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 